classification of fungi so classifying the fungi is very very important to understand their uh, general characters and what basis they are uh, characterizing or placed in the particular group uh, will be very very important so that uh, it will be very easy to understand their characters as well as their uh, uh, infection types and mechanisms on, on what basis that they are classifying so my name is nh shankar reddy i'm doing phd plant pathology in anamala university so now we will start with the protozoa starts with the protozoa here uh, uh, coming to classification here uh, we are following the most uh, uh, recent classification that is the kirketal classification which was uh, classified by kirketal in 2008 this is actually the 10th classification of fungi that we are uh, following uh, uh, most following or uh, uh, most uh, accepted classification so based on the kirketal classification the domain eukarya is divided into three that is protozoa chromista and fungi so here uh, now we are only uh, discussing about protozoa we will see in detail about protozoa so protozoa this is the uh, it is considered to be as a first animal so here the protozoa plasmodioporomycota acraeomycota chanzoa and myxomycota are the phylum that comes under protozoa in uh, classification and you know uh, taxonomy taxonomic classification itself i already told you that phylum always ends with the mycota if we understand this uh, uh, if we, uh, in fingertips that will be very easy uh, for uh, classification as well as to remember uh, classification so here uh, phylum always ends with the mycota subphylum always ends with the mycotina class always ends with the mycetes order always ends with the ales family always ends with the aca so to whatever the classification this rules will follows everywhere so here uh, along uh, all phylum of uh, uh, protozoa we are only going to see plasmodioporomycota which has uh, economical importance on plants remaining are uh, not that much important so we only see about plasmodioporomycota phylum plasmodiopora mycota this is also considered as endoparasitic cellular slimy molds here phylum is plasmodiopora mycota class plasmodiopora mycetes order plasmodioporales family plasmodioporaceae these are all the few fungi that are comes under phylum of plasmodiopora mycota that is plasmodiopora polymyxa spongospora now we will see the fungi that have economical importance on plants that we are going to only see about plasmodiopora mycota because it has the economical importance on crop plants compared to other phylum plasmodiopora mycota now we will start with the general characters of plasmodiopora mycota so it is a microscopic obligate parasites obligate means they need a living host for their survival without living host it can't able to complete their life cycle so this obligate parasites are also considered as biotropes so this plasmodiopora mycota is microscopic obligate parasites of freshwater algae and fungi Thallus is naked. These are all the general characters of phylum Plasmodiopora mycota. What are all the fungi that comes under Plasmodiopora mycota will having the same general characters. So thallus is naked. Holocarpic. Holocarpic means in general characters I told you the entire thallus is converted into one or more reproductive structures. That is called holocarpic. The definition of Plasmodium is. it is a multinucleate mass of protoplasm that is plasmodium here the thallus is naked holocarpic plasmodium so entire the entire life cycle will happens within the host entire life cycle will happen within the host except reinfection phase that happens in soil water so normally entire life cycle will happens in the host except reinfection phase that is happens in soil water because soil contains a little amount of water so this reinfection phase will happens in soil waters here juice spores are biflagellate 
anisocont anisocont means upside with the anterior whiplash of unequivalence one is short and one is long don't get confused with this that i will tell you here we can see the diagram of c these are all the uh, here they mentioned different types of flagella and the general characters i told you this flagella represent plasmodio poromycota here it's look like pa shaped anisocont flagella type anisocont flagella type with anterior whiplash there are two flagella here two flagella of anterior whiplash type what is whiplash flagella without hairs here we can see with hairs that is called tinsel type so flagella with hairs is tinsel types flagella without hair is whiplash types here the type of juice spores in plasmodium poromycotides juice spore is pa shaped anterior tinsel there are two ends one is small end one is long end unequal lengths unequal lengths of one is small end one is long end pa shaped juice spores anisocont that is upside with anterior whiplash type of unequal lengths anterior whiplash types of unequal lengths one is long and one is short these are all the different types of flagella that i had told you in the general characters itself if you want you can check the uh, previous slides sorry uh, previous powerpoints so best example is club root of cabbage very very important disease that is club root of cabbage that is caused by plasmodium poro mycota sorry plasmodium poro brassicae so these are all the general characters of plasmodium poro brassicae now we will enter into the life cycle to understand in detail so now we will see the life cycle of club root of cabbage that is caused by plasmodium poro brassicae so why we are studying life cycle so if we study the life cycle it will be very easy to understand in depth about the pathogen how it is causing the infection how the pathogen can cause infection and how the spores are get released and how it is survived and how the reinfection happens so Uh, to understand this is very very important so that we can make uh, alternate remedies and management practices so now we will start with the systemic classification so uh, as i already told you there are some key points that pylum always sends with mycota if we remember that the it will be very easy systemic classification will be very very easy few of the exams there is an also a chance that they will ask questions from systemic classification so now we will see the systemic classification so domain ends with the eukarya already told you domain already took it took eukarya so kingdom protozoa that already, uh, that we will know very well now we will starts with pylum pylum ends with plasmodium poromycota class ends with plasmodium poromycetes order ends with plasmodium porales family ends with plasmodium poraceae genus ends with plasmodium pora species ends with brassicae here genus and species will be very easy to uh, remember because in casal organism we have already seen that binomial system of nomenclature so this plasmodia is a genus brassica is a species for every pathogen genus name and species name is mentioned or specified as casal organism of the disease so the only thing that we have to remember in between is pylum class order and family family that already told you that uh, 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 that uh, pylum always ends with the mycota mycetes ales aca so if we if we remember that that will be very easy to understand and write the systemic classification so i will come with once again pylum in plasmodium poromycota class plasmodium poromycetes order plasmodium porales family plasmodium poraceae genus plasmodium pora species brassicae now we will enter into the detailed life cycle so before entering into the life cycle we will start with the symptoms so here what are on the right side that i have given the symptoms symptoms of the disease that is a club root root uh, sorry uh, cabbage root so here uh, roots get decayed followed by yellowing and wilting of plants so root uh, roots get decayed so decaying of roots can be observed 
wilting can be observed on leaves retarded of growth growth can be retarded and it produce hypertrophy and hyperplasia symptoms it is very 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 important what are all the major symptoms of plasmodio pro brassicae that is hypertrophy and hyperplasia symptoms are the main reasons for production of club root symptoms here we will see what is hypertrophy and hyperplasia so it starts with hypertrophy hypertrophy means abnormal enlargement of cells here the size of the cells is increased we can see here we'll take a look here the size of the cells increase and looks like tumor or bulging can be observed this is due to hypertrophy hypertrophy what is hypertrophy abnormal enlargement of cells or increase in size of cells so size of the cells can be increased in hypertrophy now we will see with the hyperplasia plasia means cell plasia means cell here increase in number of cells due to cell divisions due to cell divisions that is hyperplasia here hypertrophy and hyperplasia symptoms will occur here hypertrophy means increase in size of cells hyperplasia means increase in cell divisions due to the symptoms the club root will produce tumors like this in root region especially in a root region if we pull over the plant we can see this type of symptoms now we will start with the life cycle so already told you entire life cycle will happen in roots on the cortex cells except reinfection phase except reinfection phase here we will start the here initially host to roots get decayed and spores are released into the soil host to roots get decayed and spores released into soil what will happen the soil contains a little bit amount of moisture this juice spores having flagellias so what the what this juice spores will do the spores immediately with the help of root exudates they will germinate and they will swim near the roots of another uh, another uh, plant so in previous crop what will happen the infected plant juice spores or the spores get released into the soil whenever the new crop arises what will happen the plant uh, sorry the juice spores will uh, uh, attracted towards the root exudates that is produced by the plants after attra uh, attracting the root exudates they will start to swim near the roots of plant so they the juice spores will germinate and a biflagellate juice spores are already told you the type of flagell of uh, uh, plasmodium promycota there are biflagellate of unequal lengths that is unequal lengths juice spores are produced a whiplash type of flagella that is one is small end then second one is long end here there are two phases of life cycle that can be observed phase a and phase b so here the initially the juice spores get attached to the surface of roots initially get attached to the surface of roots after getting attached to the surface of roots the flagella get shredded shredded means inactivation of flagella so this inactivation of flagella will be very important so that the juice spores can enter into the roots so what will happen retard uh, retraction of axonems that is flagella the encystment of juice spores will take place encystment of juice spores will take place after this encysting they punch to the host cells and the juice spores are enter into the host cells juice spores are enter into the host cells this entered juice spores are called multi multi nucleate primary plasmodium where the juice spores having flagella they will get shredded the flagella and enter into the root cells now this juice spore is encysted this juice spores are considered as multi nucleate primary plasmodium or mixo amoeba mixo amoeba so here the protoplast size increases and undergoes a repeated division why this repeated divisions are happening due to the formation of plasmodium that is multi nucleate mass of protoplasm so to form plasmodium the protoplast size is increase and undergoes repeated divisions so later 
the the multinucleate segments are delimited so the multinucleate protoplasm is produced they are delimited and form into different types of septa like uh, segments that is called juosporangium that is called juosporangium in fragmentation itself uh, the hypha get detached and they are fragmented and develop into a new hypha that in the meantime here the multinucleate segments are delimited by forming a septa and develop into juosporangium develop into juosporangium here this juosporangium contains an average of 4 to 8 uninucleate biflagellar juospore the same juospores as well as uh, as a uh, uh, plasmodium promycota produces and they are released into through a pore these later these juospores are later function as a gametes so don't get confused here what will happen the juospores are uh, the juospores in the soil enter into the roots they will shred their flagella after shedding their flagella enter into the root cells so after entering that is called primary plasmodium or myxo amoeba so after primary plasmodium they will undergo a repeated cruciferous division to protoplasm or sorry plasmodium so this plasmodium can be segmented segmented to form juosporangium so each juosporangium contains an average of 4 to 8 uninucleate biplasmodial juospores this juospores are later functioning as gametes this is the functional unit okay then we will enter into the phase in phase b what will happen the juospores settled in the root hair shred its flagella and enter into the cortex cells so far the phase a will happen in root hairs now the phase b will going to happen in cortex cells cortex cells so each binucleate plasmodium what will happen they enlarges in size and repeated mitotic divisions will happen why these are forming to form multinucleate body that is referred as multinucleate secondary plasmodium initially we have seen primary plasmodium now mitotic division is happening to form multinucleate secondary plasmodium primary plasmodium after now secondary plasmodium so this secondary plasmodium get hypertrophy that already told you what is hypertrophy abnormal enlargement of cells or increase in size of cells so after multinucleate secondary plasmodium hypertrophy will happen and it form the club shape now the symptoms are producing in roots here the entire life cycle almost happens in roots and cortex cells that's why the symptoms are producing in roots alone only roots alone only after that what will happen karyogamy takes place and a diploid nuclei is formed then after meiosis will happen then after meiosis will happen now we will see the diagrammatic representation that will be very easy to understand this is the uh, diagrammatic representation i already told you all phases will happen in root hair and cortex cell except reinfection phase that happens in soil reinfection phase that happens in soil now we will see all i told you in a phase what will happen flagella get shredded enter into the root cells that is primary plasmodium is formed they are get a delimiting here after delimiting what will have juice porangium is formed the juice porangium each one juice porangium contains 4 to 8 uninucleate uh by uh, sorry juice porangium with the juice spores uninucleate biflagellar juice spores the juice spores are get released into the soil root spores are released into the soil then zygote is formed after that what will happen this juice spores will infect the cortex cells in the root hair there is a root hair infection after what will happen the primary plasmodium will become converted into multinucleate secondary plasmodium due to mitosis due to mitosis after that what will happen karyogamy and meiosis takes place hope you will know what will happen if karyogamy and meiosis will happens then a karyotic phase this is a, a, a karyotic phase. this is a specialized phase uh, after a karyotic phase only the club root symptoms will be formed here the club root symptoms can be happen here after what will happen a resting spores in the host cell get released into the soil and it get germinated the life cycle will continues every time when a new crop will happens in a same place because 
old crab get infected the juice spores will be there in soil if new crab will plant the old juice spores will infect the new crab and the life cycle continues here the important thing that they are going to ask is hypertrophy and hyperplasia symptoms here this entire life cycle was discovered by voronin ms voronin is a russian scientist and he is also a student of anton d barry in history in history i told you anton d barry have a great students their students later become the i mean uh, great contributors of plant pathology so this life cycle was discovered by ms voronin in 1876 in russia in those time he was there in in 1873 or 74 times those times he was there in america and uh, uh, russia was devastating of uh, this crop that is club root diseases and immediately their scientists were called for uh, Uh, to uh, to identify the uh, pathogen and you know uh, management practices and in 1875 Voronin came to Russia and he studied in detail about the life cycle and he discovered the life cycle of club root of cabbage and he named the pathogen as Plasmodium parasitae uh, this is in detail about this uh, uh, club root of cabbage